The Maldive Islands are synonymous with scuba diving. Composed of more than 1,200 small coralline islands, some are not registered in their totality, and others emerge and disappear with the seismic movements of the sea. The Maldives offer a paradise to the professional diver and the tourist who is submerging for the first time. The coexistence between the Indian Ocean and the Maldives is so close that it's easy to forget the limits between the sea and the coast. Grouped in 25 atolls, only 200 islands are inhabited and 65 of them dedicated exclusively to tourism. Most of the territory of the Maldive Islands is water. The available land is so little that the capital, Mali, occupies one island and the international airport another one. Some of the islands are so small that they only lodge one hotel. Without earth to cultivate, the Maldives have been given to the sea. The Maldive Islands are the lowest country on the planet. Its maximum altitude is five meters and the average is one. The scant altitude of the islands and the reefs of coral the cornerstone of the economy in the Maldives played a fundamental role in the tragedy of the 26th of December of 2004 during the tsunami. The absence of the continental shelf allowed the waves not to push upwards, so they just went over the earth. Meanwhile, the coral acted as a filter, like a giant strainer that undressed the waves of their energy. Although the Maldives were close to the epicenter of the tidal wave, the number of deaths was far below those of distant countries. The coral, unknown to the world of the surface, saved countless lives. There are more than 4,000 species of fish on coral reefs. Only in the Maldives there are more than 900. The diversity decreases when we move away from the tropical zone and from distant islands to the continental shelf and small islands. But in the Maldives the diversity is formidable. Many tourists visit the Maldive Islands to get away from the world. The calm of their waters and the diversity of species invites us to discover an overflowing submarine world for the first time. 20 meters beneath the surface rests a very populated place, even more than the cities from which they flee. But instead of wanting to get away, the scuba diver aspires to integrate into this incessant hustle and bustle. Soon he will discover that he can be nothing more but a privileged witness. There are dozens of varieties of butterfly fish, very different from each other, but all of enormous beauty. Within this large family, the most honored, thanks to its particular morphology, is the solitaire cocker butterfly fish. In schools of fish, or individually, they don't cross great distances, but feed themselves and defend a concrete territory of coral.
The octopus is a cephalopod with three hearts and a mouth in its abdomen. But neither this nor his eight tentacles are what draws the curiosity of divers. His singular aspect prevails, which is so different from fish. Its formidable capacity to change color, from brown to white, from white to blue, from blue to red, until being confused with the coral. Turtles have neither camouflage nor speed like the octopus, but their shells allow them to swim safely, if parsimoniously. In spite of the octopi, the hawksbill turtles, the manta rays, or the moray eels, the reef belongs to fish. It belongs to the clown trigger fish, to the great schools of fish, and to a countless number of species. advances very seriously among the coral. He knows that very few predators can endanger his almost 200 kilograms of weight and more than two meters of length. The humphead wrasse is a solitary, evasive, and sullen animal towards other living beings in the reef and with human beings. Nevertheless, in places like the Maldives, where contact with scuba divers is so frequent, they can even be hand-fed. When it reaches adult age, the humphead wrasse wrasse undergoes a change in its appearance and in its behavior. The two stripes that decorated their eyes give way to the hump on their forehead, even though they look for a grotto to serve him as refuge to spend the night. The discoverers, and later the settlers, extended their linguistic colonization all over the planet. There are few that ask the native for the native name of their surroundings. Locally named the Napoleon fish, how was the humphead wrasse called before the French Revolution? The camouflage of the octopus is so perfect, it's hard to identify it in this image at first sight. The octopus is a very unsociable species that not only avoids the presence of possible predators, it also feels threatened by those of his own kind. The surroundings are so beautiful that the diver feels the urge to touch what he sees. But for the octopus, or many fish, we are possible predators, and our games, for them, are threats of death. The friendly insistence of the diver represents enormous stress to many animals. They can be so scared that they even leave their nests and forget their young. Over the years, the diver learns to interact without hassling them.
The octopus flees from us at full speed, changing color time and again, trying to camouflage itself. But even so, we resisted accepting this simple message, please leave me alone. Evolution has generated differences among the branches of the same species. All parrotfish have teeth fused into a beak, which is the origin of their name. Nevertheless, this parrotfish has a protuberance on its forehead that it uses like a ram to break into small pieces the coral on which it feeds. Evolution equips each species with peculiarities that differentiate them. In some cases, it modifies their mouths to facilitate the search for food, and in others, their fins to swim. The inexperienced diver usually is terrified by the presence of a single shark and our panic can alter his behavior. But if we simply observe his movements, he'll put himself within reach of our hand. The legend of the man-eating shark has been refuted. The majority feed only on mollusks and small fish, but there's something in its appearance, as if it were innate in us, that makes it frightening to us. The octopus comes out of its hiding place to feed. The camera catches him by surprise and he tries to blend into the bottom. But its need to eat is greater. And for that reason it ignores us and with its eight tentacles searches for food among the rocks. And it boasts of its impossible elasticity. In spite of their sharp teeth, moray eels, like this black-spotted one, do not attack human beings if we don't provoke them. When they do, their bites cause permanent wounds. In some species, their jaws are so powerful that in order to get them to release their grip, you have to pry them off. Most of the species are hidden during the day. They take advantage of the night to hunt, leaving the caves in the coral where they hide their long bodies, which in the largest species can reach three meters. We've found a clown trigger fish. He's so rare that it's almost a gift to see it. Its friendly aspect hides one of the most peculiar systems of defense in the underwater world. He has two fins on his back. The first fin, more on top, is composed of two hard thorns that remain folded until it extends them as if they were a pair of arrows.
Some plant species, like this alga, have developed a way to move across the coral in search of food. At first sight, the diver doubts whether it's a plant that looks like an animal, or an animal that tries to deceive its predators imitating a seaweed. The ocean has defied the postulates of science on diverse occasions. At the deepest depths, some living beings do not breathe oxygen like animals, nor carbon dioxide like plants, but nitrogen. The species that coexist on the reef are so many that prey and predator swim near each other, and that's amazing. Although this school of fish may seem numerous, the fish that swim far from the protection of the reef in the middle of the ocean do so in schools of fish much denser than these. The compactness of the school is for the predator an obstacle to distinguishing a single fish as its prey. If it attacks the group as a whole, it doesn't get a thing. In some cases, the schools of fish are formed by several different species. Not always as protection, but also to expel some resident fish from the area of the reef. In the Maldive Islands, atolls abound, the preferred refuge of the blunt-nosed six-gill shark. Although it's docile, it's one of the most aggressive species towards divers. It often gives a bite as a warning, but a non-fatal one. Nevertheless, this species of shark, like the rest, is less a threat for human beings and more a victim. Every year, more than 100 million sharks are hunted around the world. Some species of shark are in danger of extinction. And for a long time, discussions have been held on the sustainable fishing of sharks. The jaws are much prized souvenirs for tourists. But the true market is for the fins. Shark fin soup is a luxury plate among the high class in Asia. A dish with which you can show your status. The price of a serving can reach 100 euros. Traditionally, China has been the main worldwide importer of fins, with more than 4,000 tons a year. In 2003, Spain was the largest importer of products derived from sharks and the second largest exporter.
This indiscriminate fishing wastes 95% of the animal. Except for the fin, the rest is thrown back to the sea. In some cases, many fishermen in the Indian Ocean even use dynamite to catch sharks. Sharks regulate the balance of marine ecology. They are fundamental to avoid overpopulation in many areas. Sharks are the gentlemen of the sea. For the diver, swimming at its side is like gaining its respect. Some expert divers cross the oceans with the objective of being able to boast that they have swum with all the species of sharks. Various companies, some in the Maldives, organize expeditions to go shark watching. In this way, the conservation of sharks has become an economic engine in many areas. Their slow growth and low rate of reproduction makes their recovery very difficult. Marine biologists are using the implantation of chips in their fins to try to observe the population. When their fins are cut, this monitoring is impossible. Human beings who were the last to arrive on the ocean bottom, don't seem to respect the norms of coexistence, which, for example, this blunt-nosed six-gill shark observes with the fish that accompany him. In just a few decades, uncontrolled human activity has endangered the survival of this species, which has been living on our planet for more than 400 million years even before the dinosaurs arose. Science has demonstrated that air and water have a common aspect. Both are fluid. For that reason, both fish and birds are aerodynamic. In order to move, they don't have to move, but the element that surrounds them does. The speckled manta ray waves its contour to glide along the bottom. In water, lift reduces gravity and we experience an upward movement. When we swim, it's as if we were flying weightlessly. Swimming so close to one of these rays can be very dangerous, especially if we put ourselves behind it. The end of its tail has a stinger with a powerful poison, which can be deadly to humans. Charmed by the smooth gliding of the ray, we have followed it to the reef until we are unexpectedly surprised by an abandoned wreck.
The coral has already begun to colonize it, but the hull of the ship is still visible. The progress of the coral on a sunken boat can give us an idea of how long it has been underwater. This one sank recently. In addition to sport scuba diving, tourism, or fishing, underwater archaeology has developed extensively in the last 50 years, as well as its worst enemy, illegal treasure hunters. Today, this shipwreck is no longer interesting for treasure hunters or archaeologists. Only to the hundreds of fish that inhabit it, like this colony of squirrelfish and soldier fish, which are unconscious of the arguments among men. For centuries, boats were the main means of transport for merchandise of all types. Thanks to them, underwater archaeology can describe those transactions, the life of the sailors, the markets and the societies that maintained them. But besides their historical value, many of these boats transported gold. Thousands of tons of gold that went to the bottom of the sea. unimaginable treasures that without knowing their value, animals protect, like this giant moray eel, which is always alert. In the waters of the Indian Ocean, between the 16th and 18th centuries, the fleet of the Dutch Company of the Indies made 8,000 round trips to China. But thousands of ships never arrived at port. There is a myth which says that just with the treasures of the Spanish ships that were shipwrecked in the Bay of Cartagena de Indias, all of Latin America's external debt could be paid. The salvage of large treasures has become a lucrative business. In the United States, an incipient private industry proliferates. Metal detectors, underwater cameras, infrared radars, cameras and other advances in technology have allowed them to arrive at the most inaccessible shipwrecks. In 2001, UNESCO decided to mediate in the continuous conflicts among archaeologists, treasure hunters, and nations. It fostered the Convention on the Protection of Underwater Cultural Patrimony, in which it prohibited the commercial excavations and the illegal possession of underwater wealth. But few countries signed it. If treasure hunters continue their uncontrolled practices, 
scenes like this one will be more and more infrequent. The one-of-a-kind guardian of the treasure allowing itself to be caressed by a visitor. Underwater archaeologists continuously sound the alarm about the destructive practices of treasure hunters. Their only interest is to make as much money as possible as quickly as possible. If an object is difficult to reach, they don't hesitate to use explosives. In 1952, Jacques Cousteau developed the first independent diving apparatus. Finally, man could move freely under the sea, swim next to the fish, explore its more hidden secrets. The ocean was opened up to us with all its wealth. The French diver's invention was a wonderful advance, but also a large responsibility. The conflict is not only over the undoubted historical value of these shipwrecks. With the incessant passage of the tide and the centuries, these boats have comprised independent underwater ecosystems and of their new inhabitants. The exploration of the underwater world is a new opportunity for us not to repeat the mistakes we made on the surface. Coral quickly colonizes submerged metals. For its precise growth, it obtains calcium carbonate in its natural form. As it climbs up the metal, the coral obtains calcium carbonate easier, and its growth is multiplied. The Maldive government throws scrap iron into the sea, like these frames, to recover damaged reefs and atolls. Coral also serves for seaweed to fix itself to the bottom, and these continue the food chain, serving many fish. The humphead wrasse comprises part of the traditional diet of the Maldive Islands. Nevertheless, eating it can be fatal. The toxin called ciguatera is ingested by small herbivorous fish, and since they don't metabolize it, it accumulates in their body. When a larger fish like the humphead wrasse devours one of these small fish, it ingests the toxin as well, although it doesn't affect him. But if a human being eats these larger fish, the ciguatera toxin can lead to death. A means to detect this toxin 
was only discovered very recently. But we still don't have an antidote for this severe poisoning. Nevertheless, many generations ago, the native fishermen of these islands developed mechanisms to avoid contaminated fish. When visiting the Maldives, the prudent thing is to avoid reef predator fish that are larger than the ones normally captured and consumed locally. Most of the marine species are edible, even the most toxic ones, if you know how to treat them. Nevertheless, our diet has reduced the variety of fish based on the facility to carry out massive catches. Technology has developed economical and manageable underwater cameras. For that reason, Many divers have switched their spear guns for cameras. There are more than 5,000 classes of sponges. Until the first half of the 19th century, they were considered seaweed. But an exhaustive study revealed that they were animals, although unable to move. Like these brain sponges, The traditional image of the sea floor is one of a group of fish swimming in unison, or one of solitary fish looking for food. But frequently, members of the same species compete violently for the same bits of food or for mates to reproduce. The octopus blends into its surroundings to escape from predators. But it also changes color according to its mood. Blue if it's excited, pale if it feels fear, and red if it's angry. When it mates, the male inseminates the female by introducing one of its tentacles into her. When the copulation finalizes, the female will try to devour the male because it won't eat again until the young are born months later. Usually, the female dies because of weakness shortly after the appearance of the eggs. With each laying, the female has to watch over about 150,000 eggs. The octopus is a nocturnal animal. During the day, it hides among the rocks. If it doesn't find shelter, it builds it by piling up rocks on the bottom. It's also common to see one sheltered among the coral 
and trying to block the entrance. The octopus is a voracious hunter. Thanks to its unsuspected intelligence, it ambushes its prey, pushing them into a corner of the coral and surprising them at night while they sleep. But octopi, in turn, are the favorite prey of moray. The flexibility of the octopus is amazing. It can introduce its tentacles into the smallest niches of coral in search of food. The octopus's most rigid organ is its eye. Whatever its eye can pass through, literally, all of its body can pass through. One of the keys to the survival of the species is its adaptation to its habitat. The octopus is almost perfect in that. Its ability to mimic, elasticity, its ink to frighten off predators. But its most formidable adaptation is its intelligence. It can identify colors and forms, and not only associate those colors and forms with meaning, but remember them for years. Swimming next to a manta ray is a real privilege for a diver. It's like swimming next to one of the giants of the ocean. The manta ray can measure more than 8 meters across and weigh more than 1,400 kilograms. Although the manta ray is present in all the temperate waters in the planet, it continues to be a stranger to marine biologists. Our knowledge about them is almost equal to ignorance. The first documented sighting dates to 1798, and ever since then, it has continued to be a mysterious animal. Until recently, we didn't know if the manta ray belonged to the family of the sharks. In the ocean, a great paradox occurs. Many of the species of large size, like the mantas, the whale sharks, and many whales, feed on the tiniest beings, plankton. The manta completes its diet with small fish and squid. Part of our enormous ignorance about these wonderful animals is due to their inability to live in captivity. It's difficult for an aquarium to have sufficiently large pools. When this has been tried with manta rays, they have refused to feed and died a few days later. Fishing with harpoons has severely reduced their population in many places. Their exact population is not known, and for that reason, we can't be sure that they are actually in danger of extinction. Nonetheless, they have been catalogued as a threatened species. Their recovery will be difficult as long as we know so little about them. 
We think that they can live more than 50 years, but there are many things we don't know about their reproductive cycle. We know that they can have one or two young, but we don't know how long it takes the eggs to hatch, where they hatch, or when. The docile behavior of manta rays has encouraged divers to grab a hold of them and let themselves be taken through the water. Nevertheless, some biologists warn that when doing so, a diver can take off the mucus that covers their skin, the mucus that protects them from bacteria and microorganisms. Sometimes the activity of the diver can be aggressive, even when he has the best intentions. But human beings are rarely satisfied with contemplating things. We immediately have the urge to touch things. And it isn't easy to resist that urge when the colors are so attractive to us and so intense. It's not a whim. Nature has equipped these animals with showy scales to communicate to others. In order to identify the same species, to attract females, or to warn predators that they may be poisonous. But we are only captivated by the message of their beauty. Or by their impossible anatomy, like the unicorn fish. One of the things we still have pending with nature is learning to enjoy without interfering. The promotion of tourism has allowed the Maldive Islands to develop their economy, although great deficiencies persist in their population. Their fame as a privileged place of rest and the fame of their exotic beaches has grown parallel to the promotion of diving on its reefs. Every year, thousands of scuba divers dive in their waters. Many do so for the first time and are absolutely amazed when they realize that under the sea, there are similar serpents to those they already know on the surface. Just as overfishing can deteriorate our seas forever, massive diving can be so harmful that we may have to deny divers the chance to discover the fascinating undersea world full of life. In our world, saturated with artificial images, the ocean offers an endless and natural spectacle. Coral reefs are home to thousands of species, as if they were underwater jungles. Among their walls, life is not hidden to our presence. For that reason, we never lose our eagerness to observe and touch, as if our senses were recognizing the world around us for the first time. In the Maldive Islands, most of the tourists thought that when they returned from their vacations, their best memories would be of crystalline waters and pristine beaches at the feet of palm trees illuminated by sundown. But after this underwater baptism, they will remember images of a world that they will never be able to fully describe.